Upfront and Outspoken with Bob Williams. If you love the Constitution, man is not free unless government is limited. If you love freedom, as government expands, liberty contracts. If you believe in personal responsibility, if you believe America is still the greatest nation on earth, then get ready for an experience you'll never forget. This is Upfront and Outspoken. Here's your host, Bob Williams. And welcome back. This is Upfront Outspoken. Of course, I'm your host, Bob Williams, with you here. My weekly rant. That's right, my weekly rant. Good cop, bad cop. What can I say? I've seen the video uh, coming out of uh, South Carolina. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. And indeed, what I see is a bad cop. That's right, you heard me. You know how supportive I am of our police departments, our men and women who are sworn to serve and protect. But this is a bad cop. He deserves exactly what he is being charged with, and that is murder. How do I feel about that? Well, it shows that our justice system initially can uh, be lax, in their investigation but if it wasn't for the fact that a private citizen had caught this entire uh, encounter with uh, mr scott then the officer probably would have walked free now what if you've seen the video you will see that at the feet of this police officer there is an object i i don't know what it is but there is an object there at moments before the shots are fired. And there were eight of them. You can count them. You hear the video, you can count them. Every shot. There were seven, a slight pause, one more. And then Mr. Scott fell to the ground. The officer walked up to Mr. Scott, handcuffed him, turned around, walked back, picked up the object that was on the ground, walked back, to where Mr. Scott was and another patrol officer and I might add it appears in this video that the assisting officer was black I'm going to tell you that right now that's what it appears is that the assisting officer was black of course the original officer walked up and he drops something presumably his taser that he said he used prior this is a bad cop this is a bad cop because not not only did he destroy the chain of evidence he used lethal force on a suspect that was initially stopped for a taillight on his Mercedes now did the individual have a right to walk away or leave the initial location where he was stopped that's up for debate he was stopped for a taillight so evidently something occurred while the stop was initially made where mr scott decided to take it upon himself and that one moment decided he was not going to be taken not going to be questioned not going to be anything and he got out of the, his patrol, uh, out of his car, his Mercedes. So in that respect, in that respect, Mr. Scott was wrong in what he did. And anyone who says otherwise is full of it. But Mr. Scott, at that moment, made the decision he was not going to be questioned by the officer. However, that does not eliminate the fact that this officer was very wrong was way out of line mr scott did not pose a threat he planted evidence basically and the video proves that scott was running away from a misdemeanor a misdemeanor and according to what we've seen in the video this officer indeed did pick up an object from where he was initially standing from where the shots were fired 
pick it up, walk over to Mr. Scott's body, and drop it in the presence of another officer. Good cop, bad cop. This is a bad cop. And I'm not going to support him. There's no way I'm going to support a bad cop. But I, like the Scott family has said, just because you have one bad cop does not mean all cops are bad. And I want everyone to be very well aware of that. Not all cops are bad. You are going to get a few bad apples that uh, somehow, you know, leak into the system. But not all cops are bad. And another thing I want to stress, and this is, you know, what people fail to realize, when you have officer-involved shootings, and I don't care who it is or why it occurred, when an officer approaches you or a suspect, we'll leave it at that, there is that moment in time when the suspect makes a conscious decision to either abide by what the officer is asking or can say, it's going to be time for me to resist this officer. There's that moment. I don't care. No one's going to tell me otherwise. You can sit there and argue all you want. But there's that moment, there's that moment when those suspects who decide to flee had the opportunity to obey the officer. Eric Gardner, he had the decision to totally abide by the officers. He resisted. It was either verbal or the officers felt that he was being aggressive. But Eric Gardner made the conscious decision to resist. Michael Brown, he too had the opportunity to do what he was told by the officer. Here too, he resisted. Remember that, folks. Everyone has the opportunity, even though it may be a millisecond, or a second or two seconds you have the choice to either resist or comply you choose to resist bear in mind that guy's got a gun is he a good cop is he a bad cop you don't know but all the bad cops out there need to come off the street there's no doubt about it and I'm not going to defend them this cop, I am not going to defend him. He's a bad cop. He deserves the charges brought against him. But here's where we as the public can get involved. And I might add, there are many police departments in this country that are trying to suppress we the people. What, what am I talking about? It's simple. If you have a telephone and most of us do that has the ability to record if you even have the hint that something is a foul with a police officer it is within your right to record that to video record it you have that right don't let any cop tell you otherwise you have that right to record it they're not going to like it. In some cases, they may even try to confiscate your camera, your video. But it is your right under the law to record them. To record what is going on. And it is those videos that have exonerated many people who have had confrontations with police officers. In fact, one with an uh, Uber driver in New York, the detective was taken of his uh, was suspended his badge was pulled because of the treatment he did to this driver what he said to this driver who happened to be of indian descent it's happened in other cases now this video you know we as citizens 
must hold our police accountable. And if you suspect, if you suspect a wrongdoing on the part of an officer, you have it within your rights, and it is a protected right under the law that you can video record what is going on. It was very lucky. In this instance, a passerby seen the officers, seen the officer, I should say, seen Mr. Scott, and he decided to turn on his video camera. He's seen it. It's all recorded. He waited a few days because, you know, like anybody else, I'd be scared crapless. What do I do? I have this. Do I give it to who? If I give it to the police, is it going to be covered up? Do I give it to this person? Do I give it to the media? This person turned around and gave it to the family of Mr. Scott. They, in turn, gave it to other media outlets. It was quickly picked up on. The officer was charged. Can we trust our police departments? The, mo the majority of people are getting to the point where they say no. But I want, to, I want to remind everybody out there, I want to remind everybody, not all cops are bad, and yet you are drawing the conclusion that all cops are bad. That's not the case. That's not the case. And time and time again, we see officers who help a family in need, have delivered babies. We've seen officers who do the right thing, you know, there are, the vast majority of police officers are good people. And we need to support those. Granted, the relationship between communities, especially those of minorities, towards police officers is, how should we say, less than tolerable. They're always suspect of the police officer in their neighborhoods. They're always afraid of racial profiling. They're always afraid of, you know, no matter what they do, isn't going to be right. And if it happens to be a white cop, well, I got news for you folks. White cop, black cop, Asian cop, Hispanic cop, it makes no difference. There are more good cops than bad cops. This was a bad cop. And I'm not going to say it. This, I'm not going to defend his actions at all. This is a bad cop. Other cases are coming up where officers are under suspicion. Colorado, New Mexico, elsewhere, where these officers who are involved in these shootings are being brought up on charges, ranging from murder to manslaughter. They are being brought up on charges, and a jury of their peer will have to decide, was it right that he did what he did? Was he innocent or is he guilty? And if he's found guilty, he's going to have to do his time. That's all there's to it. In those cases, a jury's going to have to decide. In this case, it's overwhelming that this officer did indeed shoot Mr. Scott, did pick up this taser or whatever the object was on the ground at his feet at the time of the shooting, and move it over to the body. And it also appears from this video that the assisting officer was black. No one's heard from that guy. No one's heard from that officer. No statement from that other officer has been released. But there was an exchange of words between the assisting officer and the officer who did the shooting. There was an exchange. So we're gonna be watching that very closely. I, I wanna know myself what was said between these two officers did the officer say well i gotta go get this and bring it over here if he did he broke the chain of evidence he moved evidence he should have left it alone and just stood there by it and not touched it if his side of the story was correct but he did pick it up he did move it so it does put into doubt anything the officer said. So it is therefore justified he should be brought up on charges of murder. We all need to get involved in this, like that citizen did. 
I don't care how it is. If you've got a way to video record what is going on in an exchange between yourself and an officer, or you see an exchange between an officer and someone else, and you don't think it looks quite right, you need to video record it. The officer is going to get mad in many, many, many cases, especially if the, if the cop you know, may be bad. He may be a bad cop. He is going to do whatever he can to confiscate your phone, confiscate that video. But mind you, you are within your legal rights to record it. You are. They are public officials. And therefore, you do have the legal right to record what they are doing. So I'm telling everyone out there, everyone, if you have a cell phone or a tablet or whatever you use, these smartphones, and it has the ability to record what is going on between a police officer and someone else, and you think, I mean, I don't care if, they, if you might be wrong, but if you feel that what is happening is not right, I encourage you to video record it. Do it. Hold these police departments accountable with that video. Only we, and I'm saying everyone out there, every citizen in the United States has the right to do so. We need to hold our police departments accountable for their actions. And sometimes the only way to hold them accountable is via these videos. Again, that's going to cause me grief. I'm going to get emails of hate. You know, I, I get it all the time. You think I really care? But then I also get those that say, Bob, you're right. We need to be more proactive. And you do. You can't sit back on your laurels and let a bad cop continue his actions because it's eventually going to get worse. And you're going to have shootings. You're going to have innocent people being killed because of a bad cop. It's going to happen. What might start out as a verbal confrontation where the officer was wrong in doing what he is doing, if he gets away with that, what next is he going to get away with? What else in the future is he going to get away with? We need to hold our police departments accountable. And the only way, like I said, folks, the only way is for you to video record encounters that you believe are wrong between a police officer and yourself or a police officer and someone else. We can't let these bad cops get away with it. Now, I'm going to hear a lot of flack because I mentioned earlier about Eric Gardner and, and Brown. But yet, as I said, as I said, and I, and I am going to say this and I'm going to repeat it again. Every suspect, I don't care who you are, either it is in the Scott shooting, the Gardner, you know, stranglehold case, the Michael Brown shooting, other such incidents, there is a moment, there is that moment when every suspect makes the conscious decision to either flee or resist. Bear that in mind. Even though the cop was wrong, the suspect is also partly wrong. Not to the point that he deserved to be dead, but the point where he did do wrong. He made that conscious decision to flee, to resist. Now, we'll let the law take care of all the, all the rest, but we know what happened in Ferguson. And we're suspecting the same thing is going to happen with uh, Eric Garner. But in this case, as w other cases, the officers have been brought up on charges. Everything from manslaughter to murder. So they're, the judicial system does work. So don't ever think that the judicial system is a failure. The judicial system does work. In these cases that I mentioned in Colorado and the case in uh, New Mexico, the prosecuting attorney decided, no, I am not going to impanel 
a special commission. I'm not going to impanel a grand jury. I'm going to bring these guys up on charges and let the evidence, pro or con, speak to a jury of the officer's peers. That's what's going on in these cases. Sometimes that's what needs to be done. Sometimes an outside source needs to review the cases. And I'm not talking something within that county. I'm not talking about something within that town or municipality. I'm not talking about anything within that state. I'm talking about an agency outside of the state that has absolutely no connection to the officer involved. That's what we need, folks. We need that type of commission to look at these shootings. Some type of a commission that is totally unbiased, that doesn't know the officer from Adam or Eve, as may be the case. That's what we need so we can weed out the bad cops. You know, a lot of things go on in a police officer's life. But when you have a shooting and it's a bad cop, he needs to go to prison. There's no doubt about it. No doubt in my mind. He needs to go where he belongs, and that is behind bars. In this case, in this case of Mr. Scott, we have a case of a bad cop shooting an unarmed suspect who was stopped for a quote-unquote misdemeanor. Now, you can tell in the video that Mr. Scott is nowhere near his Mercedes-Benz. So there was that moment, that conscious moment, where Mr. Scott decided, I'm going to flee. I'm going to leave my car. I'm going to flee. There was that conscious moment. So yes, the adrenaline of the officer is already heightened. What happened after that, in my book, is reprehensible. No officer should have done what he did, especially on a misdemeanor in incident. It was a misdemeanor, a, a burnt out taillight on a Mercedes. But Scott made a conscious decision. And I want everybody to understand that. We all make decisions, no matter what it is. It's a conscious decision to do what you do. It was a conscious decision by Mr. Scott to flee. It was. He was stopped. They tried to tase him. According to the officer, we're not, you know, we we'll, won't know that until the autopsy if there are marks on him for the taser. But if, in fact, he was tased and he did not uh, become subdued at that point and the officer did what he did, which the video clearly proves, eight shots later and Mr. Scott is on the ground. The officer goes back, picks up something, walks over, drops it next to Mr. Scott. And then there's a second patrolman on scene. And like I said, it looks to me, and you can review the video yourself. It's all over the net. But you can review the video yourself. It, it appears that the second officer on scene was indeed black. But what the officer did in the Scott shooting was wrong. The charges levied against the officer was correct murder so i am not going to support that but like i said too there's only a few bad apples don't judge every cop do not judge every cop simply on the basis of a few there are more good cops than there are bad cops <laughs> And with that, it is time for me to get out of here. Stay tuned because coming up right after NPR News, Ed Till will be with you all the way to 4 o'clock. Until tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., this is Bob Williams. Take care of yourselves.